Hello, and welcome back to AWS Glue Studio Learning Series Part 3. My name is Harshad Tariparthi, and I'm a specialist senior solutions architect covering analytics at Amazon Web Services. Please do watch parts one and two using the links under this video to learn how Glue Studio helps you rapidly develop any batch ETL job using a hybrid development experience. Today, you're going to learn the benefits of using Glue Studio for streaming ETL jobs and how to rapidly develop streaming ETL jobs using Glue Studio. Glue Studio is built to continue to empower the developers by providing a hybrid development experience where the developers can use the best of both from visually authoring part of their job without writing any code to writing handwritten code for complex transformations where necessary. With respect to stream processing applications, value Glue Studio adds is multifold. Using the Visual Studio, you can seamlessly integrate with AWS Kinesis data streams or manage Kafka in AWS or self-managed Kafka without writing any code. And that helps developers to be more agile when building streaming applications. If you are using Kinesis data streams as a source, then there is simply no connection management and Glue handles that all for you under the covers. If you are using Kinesis data stream as a source, then there is simply no connection management and Glue handles at all for you under the covers. When Kafka is used as a source, then all you need to do is simply create a Glue connection using the broker endpoint and you're all set. Again, no need to worry about connector code nor drivers to manage. Consumers for both Kinesis data streams and Kafka in most use cases are required to manage checkpointing to keep track of what they have read and how to resume in case of failure. These consumers often rely on external persistent stores such as DynamoDB, HBase, another Kafka topic, S3, HDFS, etc., and write code to keep track of offsets in Kafka partitions that they have processed or the shard iterator IDs in Kinesis shards that they have processed. Glue Studio simplifies that checkpointing experience by managing it for you under the cover so you can focus on business logic or building the business logic for processing the stream data. Oftentimes, customer, uh, oftentimes stream analytic use cases require joining stream data with reference data that is in another persistent store, such as your enterprise data warehouse, whether it be on-prem or AWS, or RDBMS, et cetera. And Glue simplifies using those lookup sources in your stream processing uh, code or application without writing any code using the Glue connector uh, framework. So with no further delay, let's jump right in. Similar to the batch ETL jobs, Glue simplifies streaming analytic job development using the hybrid development experience. And just like for the Glue batch ETL jobs, stream ETL jobs offer a single pane of glass for monitoring jobs and is also fully serverless. Let's consider a demo scenario where the developer needs to generate New York City taxi trip statistics, such as number of passengers, toll amount, et cetera, by vendor ID every 100 seconds. New York City taxi data is streamed real time using the Kinesis data stream as a source. And then the taxi vendor lookup table is in Redshift data warehouse, which is used to join with the stream data and the trip statistics are calculated using the custom transform function. These statistics are then published to the S3 data lake with a glue catalog table as a target for further use. Though outside the scope of this demo, you can think of the target trip statistic table, which is refreshed every 100 seconds, can be used by downstream applications for sending alerts when, when, when a threshold is reached. And similarly, that data can also be used for publishing real-time BI dashboards uh, using QuickSight or we use an advanced analytic SageMaker ML models, which are all again outside the scope of this demo. With no further delay, let's jump right in. So before going into Glue Studio, 
Let's take a look at the Kinesis stream source and make sure we're getting the data into the stream. This is the name of the Kinesis stream that we are using for this demo. And we're sending roughly about 100, mess or 100 events per second into the stream. And uh, here at the bottom, I'm gonna just validate. I'm getting all the 100% of these records and you can see that we are getting it. And I'll also show you the schema of the data that we're getting sending into the stream. And uh, you see it's the it has the vendor ID, the pickup date, time, event, et cetera. And more importantly, the metrics that we need to calculate off of the tip amount, the toll amounts, the number of passengers, the trip ID, et cetera. And each of these JSON records are specific to a particular trip. Now take a look at one of the prerequisites required before using this stream within the Glue Studio. And the prerequisite is for you to create a table in Glue Catalog manually or using an API that points to the Glue, that points to Kinesis stream that you've seen earlier. And I'm going to come here and add a table and give it a name, demo stream taxi, and select the database that I'd like to store this table under. And I'll choose demo DB and hit next. The source is Kinesis, so I'm going to select the name of the stream, which is the stream that we looked at earlier, and the name has to match here, which is basically the source for this Glue catalog table. So it's Kinesis ID Lab Demo. I'm going to say Kinesis ID Lab Demo. I want to select the Kinesis source URL, which is the public endpoint for Kinesis. And uh, this is for US East 1, which is where my lab environment is. So I'm going to hit next and select the source format, which is JSON for this um, stream. And then I'm going to leave the rest uh, defaults because the glue is going to be able to infer the schema from the stream. Uh, due to which I don't have to add the columns uh, explicitly. So I'm going to hit next and then click finish. So now we have the table that's pointing to the glue stream. And another prerequisite is to crawl Redshift and catalog the stream reference data, which is the vendor ID lookup data. And we've already done that for the purposes of this demo, and you can see it's pointing to Redshift. So at this point, we're ready to use Glue Studio to author the author our ETL job. So I'm going to click on jobs link here and plan graph to author the job. And let's give it a name. I'm going to say demo stream ETL. And we'll select our Kinesis stream source first. And here we know where the database is under demo DB and then the table name, which is demo stream taxi. The second source, let's select that one, which is our Redshift source. And you see we selected the database and the reference table for the stream. So now that we have our sources, both the sources, stream and the reference source, let's go ahead and add a transform that will process the stream data and join the stream data with the reference data and performs a few aggregates to create trip statistics. So for that, Given there is no pre-created uh, uh, stream transformation, window functions, et cetera, as a part of the transform functions, we're going to create custom code and use the power of the uh, you know, hybrid uh, development. So I'm going to select the custom transform function. And, um, and here from the node properties, we'll use both the sources. So I'm going to select the second source, Redshift, as well. So at this point, I have my custom transform, which is ready to accept uh, code. So I've already copied uh, from my other window the code that I wanted to use. So I'm going to pretty much uh, copy paste that. So here I strongly encourage you to see my part two of the video where I talk more about how to build tra complex transformations and uh, dynamic frame, what a dynamic frame collection is and how you, you know, send and uh, return uh, multiple sources and, and dynamic frames, et cetera, right? So, so please do watch that. We're getting both the data sets, the Kinesis stream and the Redshift uh, reference data. And here I'm just using some print statements to just see in my log a little later 
um, to make sure I'm getting the data in the format I wanted and you know just just quick validation from the logs. So I'm creating temp tables uh, just so I can start using Spark SQL. And here in the Spark SQL, I'm actually performing the transformation, which is you know a simple select simple uh, SQL statement where I'm grouping by vendor ID and creating aggregates on passenger count. Uh, passenger count, trip count, and um, you know some of the tip amount and the sum of tolls from the stream table, and I'm joining that with the reference table, with with which is in Redshift that we brought, so that there is one denormalized data with both the strip statistics as well as the vendor details. So that's essentially what we're doing, and then again, sort of print statements and then returning that back into the data frame. Or the data from collection. So at this point, the transformation is completed. So I'm going to add another transform just to select the output uh, that we've got from the custom transform, which is frame zero. We only have one um, data frame uh, in the collection that we've sent as output. So I'm going to continue to use that. So now that we have the transformed data set, let's go ahead and add a target to persist that data and then build a catalog table on top of that in the S3 data lake so we can query on that stream statistics data set. So for that, I'm going to select S3 as my target. And we selected the target uh, format for the files that will be written from the stream output and the location in S3 and the glue catalog table that will be created a new table under the database demo DB and with this particular name. So at this point, the job authoring is complete. So the job would create a script such as this. And I'd like to point out at a couple key things here, which is uh, the window size. Uh, typically, stream operations are performed on window functions, whether it be a tumbling window or a sliding window. By default, can you, by default glue streaming jobs use a tumbling window of size 100 seconds. Um, and uh, you can certainly change that, but you have to change it outside of Blue Studio. And the other thing I wanted to point out is the checkpointing location, which I pointed out earlier that Glue manages checkpointing for you under the covers, keeping track of the offsets that it has read from Kafka partitions or keeping track of the Kinesis shard iterator IDs that it has read from each of the Kinesis shards in the source. So all of that go into the temp directory, which is in this temp location and I strongly encourage you change this path to be a unique path for every job so that each job has its own checkpointing uh, directory. And we can save it and run the job. So at this point, once the job is completed, it'll take a few minutes. So I'm going to show you a previous job, a uh, stream job that was completed and it actually created the stream output, as you can see. And uh, when I ran this query, you can see that it actually creates the um, st trip statistics, um, which is uh, by vendor ID and uh, the, the number of passengers, the trip counts, et cetera, that, that, that the stream output has created. And this will keep refreshing every 100 seconds. You can keep running the query and then it'll, it'll, it'll populate it. This concludes the demo. So let's quickly summarize what you've learned in this video. So you've learned the benefits of Glue Studio for stream processing applications and how it can help you rapidly develop streaming application using its hybrid visual interface and uh, also allowing you to use lookup reference data that may be in an external database and use it in a stream processing job and writing your stream applications. So with that, I thank you for watching you this video and looking forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.